Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiter here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended reporting a blocked right ear, and as you can see, there is completely chock a block full of really soft, dark, um, impacted, and slightly matted earwax. And this plug of earwax extends all the way from the patient's entrance of the ear canal to the eardrum, so approximately between two, two and a half centimeters in length. And it was quite stubborn and you'll see why actually in a moment. Um, looking at the consistency of the wax, I thought this would be a bit more of a straightforward procedure than it ended up being. So I've just applied some medical grade olive oil spray to help um, just loosen the wax slightly, provide some lubrication against the canal walls. And in a moment, um, when I lift this wax plug upwards, you're gonna see at the floor of the ear canal, there's a buildup, a mass of dead skin, and that skin slightly soft, uh, macerated, and it transcended that this patient, uh, unbeknown to them and obviously to myself at the time, they have a condition called B9 osteonecrosis, and and that's whereby the bone, typically on the floor of the ear canal, so the inferior canal wall, it begins to um, to, to die and decay and separate because of reduced blood flow um, to the bone. So uh, once the, the bone starts to decay, the underlying bone, the temporal bone, and it starts to separate, it creates a crater, um, a pothole, a well, and then the skin sitting on the surface of, the, of that bone obviously then sinks in, and that skin sometimes can um, become ulcerated because uh, dead skin will fall down into that well um, and when dead skin dies it releases enzymes, proteolytic enzymes which can then ulcerate the skin and it can lead to an infection. And even still I was just really surprised that um, that this is not coming out easy. I could feel some resistance and that's because some of the skin that had fallen into this crater formed by the patient's condition B9 osteonecrosis was still attached to the underneath side of the wax plugs. I used a hook just to, to um, dissect the wax into smaller pieces so we got some smaller fragments out. Um, with B9 osteonecrosis I mean that's my suspected diagnosis we've got to be wary of a patient having a canal, canal cholesterol but I don't think it's a canal cholesterol because um, you just get a sense of it and um, there's no real um, active discharge there or prolent discharge. There's no discharge with odour either. There's no, if you've got an active infection, typically we can smell it. And I think this is just some dead skin that had just become macerated because of all the humidity and sweat. And another reason why I suspect this to be a, a B9 osteonecrosis is because this patient is anemic and has an iron deficiency in the blood, which then means that their blood produces less red blood cells, less hemoglobin, less oxygen. And the number one cause of B9 osteonecrosis is poor vascularization, so poor blood flow. And sometimes in the ear in particular, it can lead to the death of some bone and a crater being formed. A canal cholesterol works slightly differently. That's when dead skin in the ear doesn't migrate and it forms into a plug, and this plug itself um, starts to grow bigger and it's almost like a cyst and it then releases enzymes um, so then it ulcerates the skin it also it infects the periosteum which is a, a thin uh, membrane um, a sheath that sits directly on the bone providing it with all the oxygen um, all the blood uh, oxygen and nutrients that it requires so they can appear very similar in clinical presentation, but the two different underlying mechanisms between a canal cholesterol and a B9 osteonecrosis. So this definitely needs to be referred onwards. So you can see here, um, once I removed that wax plug, we still had this blanket of dead skin on this region. And if we had left that, this would be completely um, uh, unknown to us. And so I gently peeled it away. You can see that erosion. There's, you can see that the, the bone is exposed. There is a slight ulceration there. But there's no active discharge infection, which is more common with a canal cholesterol. 
Um, also, with a benign osteonecrosis, it's almost exclusively formed at the floor of the ear canal, where with a canal cleshitoma, again, that is a primary site for it, but it can also occur on the anterior or posterior canal wall, even potentially on the roof of the ear canal. Well, that's very rare indeed. So I'm just trying to clear out this crater as much as possible. Of course, there's exposed bone there. We've got to be really, really careful. Um, the adjacent skin doesn't even look inflamed, um, which, again, is more common if there's an infection there. So just advise a patient to keep the ear dry. That's really, really important. Not to poke in the ears. Uh, we advise both of these things to all patients in any case, but in particular, this patient, we're going to be really, really careful. And we referred onwards to ENT. And in a moment, you're going to see that plug. So it's quite a sizable plug. It's quite dark. So that is wax, but on the underneath, there was a, a layer of skin that attached itself to that crater that I just um, revealed. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.